Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Screw the Cubicle TV. I'm Lydia Lee, the coach and founder of Screw the Cubicle. Uh, this is the channel that you're coming to uh, to get inspired how to break free from conventional work so that you can create a much better version of your career and your life. So very likely you're asking yourself, well, what is that better version of my career? So today's video uh, is really all about um, how you can blend your skills and your interest to really find a direction for your niche, right? Find a direction for how you are going to repurpose uh, the knowledge and expertise and the skills that you already possess into a much more um, meaningful direction. So you don't really have to reinvent the wheel. I always say this if you've been watching a lot of my videos on this channel. Um, I talk about this quite a bit about not reinventing the wheel and that actually there are several different ways, which I'll talk about today on how you can tweak right what you are skilled to do what you're good at doing and really find some creative ways to utilize your skills into a different direction so that you can find your niche or your business idea that's meant for you so let's start so one of the first steps of what you might want to think about is is there a really simple way to actually do exactly what you used to do in your corporate job or in a skill set that you know how to do and simply actually just repurposing it towards helping a different person, right? This absolutely can bring new life to the skill sets you already possess simply by changing who you help. I know that well, about two years ago, I worked with uh, an amazing girl who was in London and a former journalist and a writer that used to write, you know, articles and pitch articles to the newspapers, big newspapers in London, uh, and worked on stories uh, that she was paid to do. Now, she really, really loved her craft, but at the end of the day, um, the stories she was writing, the people who she was helping get press or getting out of press sometimes um, and spinning those stories, I mean, she knew how to do that, but the cause of it uh, was really something she couldn't get behind. And I think that really can sometimes taint how you feel about your work. So when we actually worked on her business idea, simply just changing who she helped, which was innovative entrepreneurs, startups that she admired, people that she really felt should punch above their weight, you know, because they're doing really cool stuff in the world. When she ended up doing that work for those, those people, those avatars, the meaning of her work ended up changing. Uh, so I want you to, to invite you to sort of think about that for yourself. Who are you really drawn to help? Who are people around you that you sort of feel, wow, I really want to help these people. There was some sort of alignment there with them. Maybe you are that demographic or maybe they have a background or history or story very similar to yours and you feel drawn to help them who are these people and how can you use some of the problem solving skills you have some of the technical skills or whatever skills that you possess to help these new people doing the same thing you used to do uh, but just really bringing new satisfaction new meaning to the way that you utilize your skills so another way to see how you can find your path for your niche or your business idea is to consider combining two or more of your skills together to sort of make a very powerful, unique offering that you can give. So an example of this is let's say you're someone that loves to mentor people and you love to problem solve for people and you also have a really good strength in finance and budgeting. You might consider combining those skills to become a finance coach or a money mindset mindset coach uh, for, for a particular audience, again, for that you like. Maybe they're women, maybe they're mothers, uh, maybe they're single women, whatever that demographic is for you, even coming from the first uh, step that we talked about right before this, um, is being able to really make yourself um, much more valuable. Right. So when we are um, in corporate work, we sort of depend on one job title, one way of explaining ourselves. But now that you're um, creating your own job in your business, being able to combine a few different of your strength to create a very unique offering or unique positioning for yourself can absolutely help you find direction and your uniqueness uh, to express yourself in a new business idea. All right. So the third way uh, to find the path to your niche and your business idea is to consider boundaries. I love boundaries. Um, boundaries are really allowing you to know when you start with somebody and when you end with somebody. So if you're someone that's starting a business right now, you might be trying to solve too much of the problem or too many things for too many people. Uh, so I would really invite you um, to really think about boundaries, right? Where you start and where you can end, which are only that sort of 
room that you're willing to contribute to or willing to give value to and nothing beyond that. So a really good example of this, sorry for the rooster outside my house, <laughs> is a client that I work with who was an academic professor uh, and one of the things that she wanted to do was help teach people how to teach better, right? So it could be courses, it could be retreats, it could be workshops that she could be helping with and of course it's really tempting to go, well maybe I have to help with the sales and marketing of a course as well uh, or I would need to know how to sell a course for people uh, in order to teach them how to create a learning experience. Experience. And that's not true. She could absolutely stick with where uh, she wanted to go. And this is what we did for her is really to keep some boundaries with um, only focusing on the stage of the problem that she really is interested in. And so this woman that I worked with really chose the beginning stage when someone actually you know, was an expert, but didn't know how to turn their expertise into sort of structured processes uh, or modules for their course and how to tell the story behind the course. This was all she did, right? Just about the uh, creation and development of the learning experience, teaching them how to teach. And then when they're ready to, ready to market, she refers them to someone else or refers them to another resource. And that's an example of creating some boundaries around your work. Okay, so the fourth way of how you can consider to find your niche is to be able to mix and match your skills and your passions. So here's where you can start by sort of brain dumping, right? Um, all the different skill sets that you may know how to do and sort of get fun with it and mix and match a couple different versions of how things can be mixed around. So what I mean by this is let's say uh, there's an example of that you are um, someone that is interested in um, health and wellness and let's say you have a skill that's your passion, right? Or your interest. And let's say your skill sets that you might want to consider sort of mixing and matching uh, is that let's say you know how to do um, marketing funnels, right, for people or you know how to write and copyright uh, for people as well. So you could come up with a couple of different versions of this. So for example, you could just solely be a copywriter uh, for the wellness and, um, you know, health industry, so coaches or uh, people that, that really would need you in that industry and you do copywriting for them. Uh, another way is you could obviously mix into just the funnels piece, right? Just the funnels and marketing piece of digital funnels uh, for health and wellness uh, industries. Uh, and then you can even dig a little further of, you know, what sorts of products do health and wellness people uh, sell? Uh, and you could potentially say, well, I think I'm really good at events, you know, and I could use my funnels and marketing strategy and my copywriting to help market health retreats for people in the industry. So as you can see, there's sort of different ways of deepening, right? Those ideas as you play with them and mixing and matching them might actually really give you a really good brain dump session uh, and allow you to come up with all sorts of versions of those angles so that you can pick the ones that best suit it for you and what you're willing to do and capable to do today. All right, we are on the last um, fifth step of how to find your niche. And the fifth step is something that's personal to you. Um, and so my question for this step is, what have you solved for yourself that may have been a pain or a struggle? So this step is really called um, be the customer, right? You are the customer. So a lot of times I think when we've gone through some struggles in our lives or be able to solve something for ourselves, it's very natural for us to wanna share it with other people. And maybe that moment of solving something for ourselves have become a very significant moment in our lives. It changed our lives, it transformed something uh, in reality for ourselves. And that may be a clue to a business idea or a path that you want to contribute to. So look at your life and look at all the significant moments that have happened to you. Times that you've changed, thought, times that you've uh, you know, overcome adversity, um, anything painful could actually be used to help transform other people's lives if they're going through that pain, except that you are probably two or three steps or a few years ahead of them. Could you go back in time and help them? Um, you have solved something for yourself. There's been steps, there's been milestones that you've met in order to bring yourself from the sort of before pain to the after solution and could that be a consideration for yourself to teach that part so the big thing here is not to rely only on your resume you can rely on your personal life things that you have achieved never been paid to do but absolutely still really relevant to the meaning uh, of work that you may want to do because you're obviously very personally aligned with it uh, simply by going through it uh, from the past Okay, so I hope that was really helpful for you guys of the five ways to look at how you might be able to find your niche. And if you're interested to actually really find your niche uh, and get real clear about the direction of how you, uh, where are you gonna create your business and what sorts of approaches and solutions are you gonna create for the right people, 
to solve the right problems that people want to buy from you, um, I have an excellent course called the Find My Niche Masterclass. It will literally take you just a weekend to do, and it's going to clear the path for everything that um, you need to answer for your business so that you can move into uh, more of the cool stuff like marketing and putting yourself out there to get clients. But before knowing this, you know, what is your niche, it's really, really hard to create a business. So somewhere here, there's going to be a link or an image for the Find My Niche Masterclass that you can enroll in. Honestly, it takes just a weekend and there are four bite-sized videos that come with a workbook that's going to walk you through step-by-step -step of how to discern your ideas, take inventory of your skills and your strengths, and narrow your focus to really find the niche that matters to you and clear enough for you to be able to market to other people. If you have any questions, just comment below this video. And I want to thank you again uh, for joining me for today's episode. Always appreciative of your time uh, and supporting this channel as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thank you so very much for watching Screw the Cubicle TV. And don't forget to subscribe below to get all the latest cubicle crashing content on how to quit your nine to five and create a life and business on your own terms.